So I think making an industry connection early on is also really helpful and has benefited a lot of students, um, you know, that I saw as I went through our program as well. Uh, some of my, you know, colleagues are now colleagues that went in and work in different uh, systems. They met a lot of those people in a classroom or as an undergraduate uh, researcher here at K-State. So those industry connections, I think, are big as well. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain. And today we have with us Dr. Peyton Dahmer, an instructor in the Department of Animal Science at Kansas State University. So Peyton, before we begin, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, and I'm originally from Missouri and grew up uh, involved in the swine industry, but much more on the show pig side, actually, a product of the 4-H and FFA programs. And so that was my experience in the swine industry. Um, I made my way to Kansas State University as an undergraduate, primarily because of uh, the strong swine presence that we have here. And so I did my bachelor's degree in animal science here at K-State and then stayed on for a master's and PhD here as well um, under Dr. Cassie Jones um, and finished that up and started on faculty here just right out a year ago. Gotcha. So from what I see, you clearly have a passion for teaching and have kind of used that passion at Kansas State to develop a, a platform to help get students interested and involved in the swine industry. So since from the last year that you've been at Kansas State, what exactly has that looked like for you and your role there at Kansas State? Yeah, so it's kind of taken a, a variety of different forms. Um, you know, I see a lot of kids like myself that uh, – had involvement in the swine industry, whether that was through 4-H and FFA, but we also see a lot of students in kind of the traditional animal science student looks slightly different today, where maybe they have no experience with pigs or know nothing about pigs in general. And so um, a lot of different mechanisms have been used to kind of help get those students involved. Obviously, I spend most of my time or a large majority of my time in the classroom and interacting with those students. A lot of that's through our undergraduate research program. And so both during my graduate career, but then now even uh, as a faculty member, I get to help kind of lead some of our undergraduate research projects, which means getting students, um, sometimes up to 20 different students out at our swine farm and involved in research with pigs. For a lot of those kids, that's their very first time even being around pigs. And so it's kind of that initial exposure, not only to research, but the swine industry as a whole. Gotcha. And so those, so those strategies that you kind of mentioned like that are great examples of how we can get um, students within animal science interested in swine industry. Um, but what are some strategies that you've employed to kind of spark an initial interest in it? animal science even to begin with, if not swine for say like high schoolers or people trying to figure out at the, as freshmen trying to figure out exactly what they want to do with their careers. How do you get them first interested in the swine industry or in animal science? Yeah. So I think one great thing that really makes us unique here at K-State that we get to do is our students, regardless of their background or experience, uh, you know, I meet with a lot of prospective students over the course of a year. And again, many of those have no experience with pigs and probably have no prior interest in working in the swine industry. But our students from day one as an animal science student get the chance to um, be involved in in animal science, but also swine production. And so they're taking a class their very first semester where they get to work with pigs and kind of have that initial exposure that then helps spark the interest. And uh, we have great opportunities to share about, you know, internship and job opportunities that will be available to them in the swine industry over the course of their undergraduate career. We do that right off the bat. And so as freshmen, they kind of get to have that initial exposure. And then from there, they can find themselves either working, you know, at our research farm, we help pair them with in industry internships over the course of their undergraduate career and then some of those undergraduate research experiences. And so really starts as a freshman. We kind of expose them initially via a class, an animal science lab. And then from there, it builds interest. Um, and those students that are interested continue to take either subsequent classes or get involved with on-campus jobs or internships. Gotcha. And then what would you say are some of the biggest barriers to getting students involved within the swine industry? 
Yeah, I think speaking from personal experience, um, and mine is probably, you know, I had a little bit more prior experience to just pigs in general than many of our students. But I think a lot of it is just their background. Um, Many of them, A, don't know anything about pigs or the greater swine industry, but they also uh, feel as though because they have that knowledge barrier that maybe they can't do it. And so that's where we kind of strip those barriers down to students. Uh, You know, we have a lot of students that come here that grew up on a commercial swine operation, but we equally have students that grew up in, you know, more urban areas and haven't been around pigs. And regardless of that background, they get to come in, they get to be a part of that initial class where they work with pigs in a lab type setting. And then from there, uh, we make it known that there's opportunities in the swine industry, regardless of their background. And I would say, you know, of the student population that I've worked with during my time as a graduate student and a faculty member, a larger percentage of those students actually came from those urban areas or knew nothing about pigs that then go and work in the swine industry than those that maybe grew up with it. So what does recruitment of these students actually look like at Kansas State? Yeah. So when we think about, you know, identifying those students and how do we get them interested in pigs? How do we get them kind of uh, sparked and and interested in having maybe a career in the swine industry? Again, it kind of builds off some of those things that I've already talked about, undergrad research, teaching, things of that nature. But, uh, you know, we're lucky here at K-State that we have a very, um, you know, diverse, very, uh, an awesome group of swine faculty. And those kind of industry partnerships allow us to bring in folks, uh, whether that is at our career fair, whether that is into kind of our our career preparation class or some of our swine based classes, we're able to bring some of our, uh, you know, network in the swine industry, bring those people in to our department and they get to talk about, you know, their production systems and the things that they do and the opportunities for internships or jobs to kind of give those students a little bit more of a um, kind of in-depth view at each one of those systems and what opportunities might be there. So I think making an industry connection early on is also really helpful and has benefited a lot of students, um, you know, that I saw as I went through our program as well. Uh, Some of my, you know, colleagues are now colleagues that went in and work in different uh, systems, they met a lot of those people in a classroom or as an undergraduate uh, researcher here at K-State. So those industry connections, I think, are big as well. Gotcha. And the final question I have for you is, how can producers and other professionals involved in swine production not just produce pigs, but help produce future industry leaders as well? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one thing that, that we try to really promote um, is kind of, you know, the, the students that we have are, are the future of the swine industry, the future workforce. And obviously, uh, you know, that labor is is one of the kind of biggest challenges as we face as an industry moving forward. And so um, I think, you know, providing those internships. And I know that there's a lot of you know, producers and a lot of production systems that do a great job of of welcoming those students in. But I think um, the more of those opportunities that producers can provide, uh, even if it's not a paid internship, just letting students come in and shadow and kind of get a, a firsthand look. I think that that's a huge selling point to helping recruit those students in the future, because a lot of, uh, of those kids, you know, they start out, maybe they want to be veterinarians, but that morphs into something different once they get exposure to the swine industry and turns into something like like nutrition or things of that nature. And so to me, one of the biggest things is just making sure that those opportunities are provided. Um, it's it's easy to not maybe uh, want to extend that hand or it's easier to uh, you know find other sources uh, of help. But I think that extending opportunities to undergraduates that have no prior experience and knowing that things could be a little rocky at first, that's how we get them involved is a huge ability that we have or a huge advantage we have to get those students involved. Giga Technologies manufactures just all swine precision feeding systems, designed by a family of pork producers for pork producers. The just all feeders are a simple, durable, and reliable solution, trusted by industry experts for all production stages. For 30 years now, Giga Technologies has been at the forefront of innovation, continuously enhancing sow nutrition and delivering remarkable outcomes for producers. Contact Giga Technologies specialists to learn more. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you, Peyton, for coming on the show and best of luck in your position in the coming years and developing those future leaders. I know that's one of the most important aspects of our job within the swine industry is making sure it can keep going in the future. So thank you for all that you do. And I appreciate you coming on here and sharing it all with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. 
We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.